Hello, my name is Kimberly Wilson of Tranquility to Shore and welcome to another episode of Tea with Kimberly. Now this is for you pet lovers out there. One question I get repeatedly is how do you travel with your pets? Okay, so we tend to take our dogs everywhere. We even took Belle Star, who was our beloved um, puppy mill mama, who was rescued from Oklahoma to Paris twice. We took Louie to Paris once. And our other dogs, Mookie, Gizmo, they go with us everywhere. Matter of fact, we don't go anywhere without them anymore um, because of the special needs that they have. It just <laughs> makes us happier and it makes it easier, even though it's more complicated. Okay. So I have a list of things to keep in mind to travel with your pet. And I will say cats, I've got a cat sitting behind me. So if he gets up and about and you hear a jingle, that's what's going on. Cats, overall, I have found prefer to stay home. Okay, so it's always great to get somebody through Rover or a friend to come in, check in and love on them. Dogs, at least in my experience, I found they want to be with you. Okay, so traveling with your pet is a whole thing and very, very doable. So first of all, we only go to pet friendly hotels and there are tons of them. So just be sure that whenever you find a pet friendly hotel, is there a service fee? Sometimes there's a hundred dollar service fee for the night, right? Sometimes, you know, you're going to be there a week. It's a hundred dollar service fee. So that's not the end of the world, but nightly is. So always making sure that pets are actually allowed and loved and appreciated. And there are many hotel chains out there that do that, such as the Kempton Hotels. There's Red Roof Inns for more on a budget. La Quinta, I'm pretty sure, tends to be pet friendly. And so finding a chain or a place that just feels like, okay, this is solid. I know I can take my dog. Typically, they don't want you leaving them alone, though. So if you're going to be going out and about, you're going to need to get a sitter or take them with you. Okay. The other thing too is Airbnb. There's a filter, thank goodness, that you can choose for pet friendly. And then you can find a wonderful home away that will allow you to bring your beloved four-legged friend or three-legged or what have you, because, you know, not all animals still have all four legs. Speaking of, you know, I've got a little disabled chug right next to me, Pug, and we think he has a little chihuahua on him, which makes him a little crazy. Um, And one eye, right? So you can't just be like, oh, four legs, right? We don't know. Anyway, so the other thing that you want is a carrier of sorts. So we have what's called Sherpa bags. They're really great. You can get them at, you know, your local pet store and they tend to be airline approved. So those are always nice to have. I will say our dogs tend to be on our laps or they have little beds set up in the car. But if you're going to be transporting them, you want to have a bag for them. Unless, of course, it's a big dog and that's a whole other animal. (laughs) Um, the other thing is collars with tags. So just God forbid your dog got away from you or, um, you know, something happened. We want to make sure they have their tags so that your phone number is on there and they can always be found and re re reunited with you. Um, also, you know, having medical records can be helpful. One time we went to Canada, of course we had our dog with us and they were like, do you have your rabies? rabies vaccine. We're like, rabies, what's rabies? And um, we're like, oh, rabies, right? And so we had our paperwork. And, you know, your vet will usually give you paperwork that's like sealed. Also, we tend to keep it electronically in Evernote. So you may not remember to grab your paperwork. And so in that case, it's nice to just make sure you have it all documented. So, you know, we know if that they're up to date with vaccines and what have you, because doggy daycares don't want dogs coming in that have not gotten all their shots, right? So if you are going to be having your dog with other dogs in places outside of where you usually are, then you want to make sure you've got that, all that information up to date. Bring a Fido is a wonderful resource for finding hotels, restaurants, activities that you can do with your dog in different places. I tend to, for our dining experiences, again, we take our dogs everywhere. And so we'll call restaurants, even if they say pet friendly, like on the app, 
on the Bring Fido app, call them. And, you know, sometimes places just have outdoor spaces, so it's assumed they are dog friendly, but they're not. So it's always good to call. I just like to call and double check. And usually they're like, yeah, no problem. Or actually, we don't have any outdoor seating. You can bring them indoors. That's rare. <laughs> but, you know, finding out like what are the options? And then that's how we choose our dining is where can we take the dogs? And I'll tell you, there's some really nice restaurants. We went to a gorgeous one, gosh. And, um, Marin County, a beautiful vegan restaurant that's associated with a hotel. I'm blanking on the name, but last summer, and it was amazing. It was like beautiful, beautiful, like high end. Could totally bring dogs in, which was amazing. So, you know, always check because you never know. And it's just um, great to be sure because if you want to have them with you eating, then you want to be um, making sure that you don't show up and you have your heart set on a restaurant and Fido can't come. So, with flying, I just want to mention a few things is you need your approved carrier. Ideally, we only want to take our dogs ideally, and I know that's not always possible for bigger dogs, but you know, if they can kind of be under the seat in front of you, just so that like, you know, you have the connection and make sure they're safe and secure. Of course, dogs can fly in cargo. And they do, and they're, you know, typically all as well. Um, I think I'd be so nervous, Nelly, the whole time. So if you have a big dog, that's your only option if you're going to fly with them, but unless it's a service dog, of course. But you want to make sure that your dog can fit and turn around in that little carrier. So usually up until about 25 pounds, you know, is enough or is, is the max really for those bags to make sure they can get up and turn around. The other thing too, if you want to fly abroad with your dog, I will say, like say when we took our dogs to France, you have to get all this paperwork done and you can do this through your vet, but I mean, it goes to the point where you get it USDA approved and you get it like back with a stamp from Albany, New York, um, that's saying that your dog is fit to fly and to be in another country and is healthy and what have you. And so, and that takes, um, a bit of time, quite a bit of paperwork, quite a few vet visits, and it's probably, I'm guesstimating, but about $500. So just something to keep in mind. One time we were though in France for six weeks, right? I led two 10 day retreats. And then after that, we took two weeks and did an RV trip. Well, of course we wanted our dog with us, right? So, you know, it's worth paying that. And um, just keep in mind, you know, that this stuff, it does get quite costly and, if you want to travel with your, your dog, then some of these things are going to be included and we just want to budget for. Also, Amtrak, as of this recording, allows dogs, I think up into maybe 20, 25 pounds. So something to keep in mind that you can now take Fido on Amtrak, which is amazing. I've taken Gizmo, who you may hear snoring next to me, a few times on Amtrak and it's been easy peasy, super nice. The other thing is packing. Oh my gosh, the amount of stuff we take for our dogs is ridiculous. We take dog beds because they have pink fuzzy ones that they like. Sometimes we take clothing if it's needed, like say they're going to be in some place that's really cold. They have little hoodies and, you know, raincoats and things along those lines. Of course, their collars, their harnesses, their leashes, um, their food. And then Gizmo has a stroller. So we have to take the stroller, which takes up a ton of space. And then he also has a sling and the sling is helps us whenever a, we're going to be walking a lot, but we don't want to take the stroller and then he doesn't have to walk. He sits in the sling or when he gets really riled up because in the evenings, he gets a little doggy dementia and then we can put him in there and he feels really safe and secure, kind of like snuggled up with us. And sometimes it's the only way to calm him down at night. So we have a sling. There's also great backpacks or different things along those lines. So it's amazing what you have to pack and do not forget the treats or they will be very upset with you or their favorite toys. So as you can imagine, it's probably, I don't know, like two bags worth of stuff with all the food and the bowls and et cetera. And then, um, you know, all the accoutrements. So <laughs> that's traveling with your animals. And again, I'm not really speaking to cats because in my, in my experience, cats just want to stay home. Um, if your kitty is a traveler, all these things would apply. Of course, you would need a litter box too, which is one other thing. But just a few things to keep in mind. It is such a delight to have your furry friend with you, particularly if you get to go on the beach and, you know, check though, because some beaches only allow dogs on the beach at certain times. 
which is always kind of sad. So you have to get up like really, really early in the morning or you go late in the day, which is fine because it's less crowded. But, you know, we found at least for our disabled dog, Gizmo, he loves the sand. I think it just feels really good on his back legs that are um, a little wonky, like the knees don't quite go into the joints. So, and it's a birth defect. He's always had this, but something about the sand, he like runs like a puppy. He loves it. And so, you know, just allowing your pet to be in these different sort of settings can be really sweet and also disorienting for them. So as much as possible, see if you can keep a regular schedule for your pet. You know, we have certain feeding times, we have certain walk times and keeping those as much as possible. And if you're road tripping, which we just recently did, you know, like eight hours each day, you know, we stop what, like at least at least two or three times you stop for gas and then you want to feed them at some point because you know maybe you've been on the road a while you probably fed them in the morning at home or at a hotel then in the evening usually you'll need to stop and do a little feeding so just things to keep in mind and um, it is so fun though and it's so so special and um Another thing is a white noise machine for those of you who have animals that are quite, you know, startled. Some, some animals are scared to death of trash trucks that they might hear outside the window or um, police sirens, things along those lines. So if you travel with a white noise machine, again, one other thing that might also make everyone's lives a little bit easier. And of course, do not forget the medication, the vitamins, all those great things. And I think that covers it. So I hope this is helpful and I hope you will travel with your pet and just drop me a note. Hello at KimberlyWilson.com and let me know how it goes. Fingers crossed it's smooth. And if not, just know you can iron out the kinks next time, or you might decide Fido would prefer to stay home and that's okay too. All right, have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks for tuning in.